I've spoken a lot previously about the fact that I am not very adventurous when it comes to film stocks and that's something that I'm trying to change. I kind of like to stick to what I know, like to stick to what is, I guess, predictable and what I can know that I can control. So, you know, like your Kodak portraits, your Fuji Pro 400H, and of course your Lomography color negative stocks, you know, those are my favorites. Um, I love Lomo 400 and Lomo 800. But recently, Lomography sent me some Lomo Chrome Purple, which I did a video on, and it really pushed me outside of my comfort zone and kind of introduced me to the world of shooting with um, novelty films. And I was really impressed, a lot more impressed than I had, I guess, expected to be. And on that note, I want to say a massive thank you to Lomography for not only sending me that role of that role of Lomochrome Purple, but also sending me a role of Lomochrome Metropolis, which is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So when they sent me this stock, it's something that I, a stock that I'd known about and seen people use before, but like I said, I'm not very adventurous. I hadn't really considered using it, stepping outside of my comfort zone. So when they sent me the role, I really took it as an opportunity to, to experiment a little bit more and take it out on a walk and see kind of what results I got from it, how I liked it. If you don't already know about Lomochrome Metropolis, it is described as a film stock that uses a unique chemical formula to Lomography and it desaturates your colours. Lomography describe it as a film stock that is built for exploring the urban jungle. This video is taking me ages to film because it's firework night. Hopefully the sound of fireworks subsides throughout this video and it isn't too distracting. Um, apologies in advance. But back to the film, a little bit more about the film. It is available in 35 millimeter format. It's available in 120 and 110. I will be shooting it on 120 throughout this video. And similarly to the Loma Chrome purple that I shot, it is a variable ISO, which means you can shoot this film stock from 100 to 400. ISO. But let's take a look at some of the images I shot and some of my initial observations. So firstly, the, the effect that Lomochrome Metropolis gives is something that I would best describe as if you took a full colour image and a like sepia image and crossed them over. That's kind of how I see this film stock from the, the one role that I've shot. And that's kind of because of the very warm shadows, the brown hues that you have in those shadows. From my prior research, I actually expected this stock to be a lot colder um, in temperature than it is, but that might be down to the lab that I used and the way that it's been scanned. Regardless of what caused the warmth in these images, I generally prefer my images to be on the warmer side, so I'm pretty happy that it did turn out this way. Something else that I noticed in this image is that the warmer colours definitely pop, so the reds and the oranges tend to look a lot more full of life than, than the colder colours. Because of that, I think that it works best when there are colours in frame. So for example, this photo here, where the palette is all quite similar, the colours all kind of mix into each other, especially because I've underexposed it, so it is a little bit muddy in the shadows. But you can see compared to the images, of the fruit, how the one where all of the colors are very similar, the palette is kind of a bit wish-washy and doesn't have that kind of same pop or contrast. Comparing it to another photo that I took that is also underexposed, you can see how the red in the shadows here, the red of the traffic lights, pop out even within that shadowed section. Something that impressed me about this shoot was the dynamic range and how well it dealt in this situation where the scene captures a bit of indoor and a bit of outdoor. I think that the indoor elements and the outdoor elements are both pretty well exposed um, given the contrast in light. But something I have noticed is that there is quite a large grain structure within this film and it's not something I really mind that much um, but I'd be interested to see you know how that kind of transpires when you're using it as a 35 millimeter stock and not on 120. But overall I intend to use this stock a lot more within street photography. I think that it helps to add that like added interest to your image. I think one of the great things about shooting on film is that we 
rarely have to do much editing or you know post-processing after it's all been developed and scanned and for me i really like the qualities of this film stock the colors that this film stock brings with it i'd like to shoot it in kind of a colder atmosphere so maybe with more glass buildings this particular role i shot on my way from croydon to the film lab in shoreditch they're called eye culture if anyone wants to check them out they're great but yeah i'd like to see you know more like canary wharf kind of vibes or um, the shard, those kind of buildings and architecture and how that performs on this film stock. So I'd be really interested in trying out another role and seeing how that fares. I also, like I said before, I wanna try it out on 35 millimeter and how that differs to the 120. Obviously with 35 as well, you get more shots. So I can kind of explore a little bit more um, in a little bit more depth. The, the realms of the film stock. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's just a quick one from me to run you through some of the photos. I'm really pleased with them and I really enjoyed shooting on the film stock. If you have experience shooting on Nomochrome Metropolis, I'd love to see your work. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.